So I was supposed to talk about, uh, what was I supposed to talk about? Building. IPLD and friends. Oh, by PLD and friends, right. Okay, we'll get to that. Oh. Uh, the, but Brooke asked me in the hallway, um, I want to know why query failed. And I was like, oh, I, I can talk about that. Uh, and so this is going to be, I literally have cooked this up in the last hour, very much in the spirit of this track. Um, to, because I think it's a valid question. And it, it, as soon as she asked, I was like, of course, it's like the perfect thing to talk about when you're talking about building applications on IPFS. Um, I want to say that a lot, this is actually very quickly assembled. And like a lot of these views, I very, very, very much believe in the uh, strong views weekly held uh, principle in the sense that I'm going to tell you a lot of stuff that is very off the cuff uh, for the purpose of getting some of these conversations out into the open so that ideally we can have this move into a discussion. Um, but I am... Uh, I'm very at peace with this. I'm very proud of Query. I think it's one, it's, yeah, six years of my life went into it and some other wonderful folks. Uh, so I'm not uh, angry about this, but I think it is really exciting to talk about what we learned. And uh, as Brooke was saying, like, it's just, it's when you actually get the full honest truth when, when something kind of hits its conclusion. And so just for those who don't know, uh, Query or QRI uh, is or was a, a data set version control tool built on top of IPFS. Uh, we got our start uh, archiving government data sets from the Environmental uh, Protection Agency in 2016. Uh, so we've been building on top of IPFS in late 2016. Uh, I met uh, a lot of the members of Protocol Labs when they were like a team of 13, um, and it was a really fun time. Uh, and have had have had actually the real distinct pleasure of working in this ecosystem for a long time. Uh, we built Query uh, over a number of years. Uh, Query wound down in January of this year uh, when we, for two reasons. And the reasons that I gave publicly on, on the internet were one, data is not code, and two, computing, competing with Web2 companies on, Web3, uh, on a Web3 stack is hard. Uh, that should be, I can be more direct than that today. Um, I've had a little more distance. <laughs> uh, the, and the first, the top line here, we really, it's really important, uh, I think, as a founder to like actually acknowledge, look, at the end of the day, the reason Query failed was we didn't achieve exponential growth, right? Like we did not build a great startup that, that just like had insatiable demand. I'm okay with that. Like I don't, I, but like, I mean, the next point, which is spicy for this room that we'll talk about, <laughs> but like, it, they need to go in that order, right? We're talking about IPFS. We chose to use IPFS. We chose to be as part of this community. We chose to build on top of it. Like those are all choices that we actively made. So this is not to foist blame on anybody, right? And this is much more about like, I, I, I sleep perfectly well knowing that like, hey, I went out to build a startup. Something like 95% of startups fail. Something like 95% of statistics are made up on the spot. But like, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. The second point, though, is obviously going to be the thing that we're going to focus on here, which is IPFS sold us a bill of goods that it could not deliver on, which uh, is uh, in many ways true. And I want to get into some details on that. Um, I think the biggest thing that is actually better expressed in this first point is competing against Web2 on a Web3 stack is hard. This idea that what actually happened in practice for us was we set out to build a thing that provided a benefit to a set of real world users trying to do a thing which was, hey, we want, to <laughs> we want to help data scientists do data science better. And specifically, we want to facilitate the construction of an open data commons that is self-sustainable, much in the same sort of way that open source software uh, works. See the aforementioned point, data is not code. I learned the hard way that like one of the biggest mistakes I made as a founder is I'm not a data scientist. And because I'm not a data scientist, I cannot iterate internally and dog food in my own brain of like, ah, my data science brain doesn't want this. And that was actually like, you know, sometimes it takes you six learns to learn, six years to learn a really simple lesson. But in the past, <laughs> in the future, when we set forward, I'm working on a new project because I've spent six years building on top of IPFS and I know what I want out of IPFS, <laughs> like to a T. Um, and, but along the way, we, the, the sort of way this played out in over the years was we got IPFS to work the first version of Query talked to the IPFS daemon uh, via the HTTP API. Uh, we could not get Query peers to stay connected to each other. So we brought IPFS, the Go library. We wrote our, software, our source code in Go. We brought IPFS in as a library. At the time, it was never intended to be a library. Uh, as I understand it, some of the IPFS engineers were like, 
why are these people doing this? This is not the right way. And actually started bending to the IPFS as a library use case based on us and others in the ecosystem trying to do that. Um, we still had the problem of like getting query peers connected. So we wrote our own libp2p protocol to say, hey, uh, the connection manager had just come out when we did this. And we said, awesome. We will detect when we connect to a peer. We will ask them if they support the query protocol. And if they do, we will add a thousand points to their connection manager value. And that will keep them connected, which was like a technique that, oh, great. Casey's in the room. Casey wrote that code. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the... And then we got into, okay, we can't transfer data. Like we, like we, a lot of our users want git push, right? They want, hey, make new version of data set, send new version of data set to some other place. And that needs to work consistently and fast, right? And if we think about like an rsync style, particularly because query was a version control tool, you know that the set of blocks that have changed is not the entire deck. We do not need to sync the whole thing here. We should really be saying something that looks a lot more like rsync. So we wrote an rsync-like protocol called desync, and we basically took off um, BitSwap. And uh, like 95% of all query data set acquisition was over this desync tool that just used HTTP and eventually car files um, and manifests. We put IPFS Kubo into a, a desktop application and made the desktop application auto-updating because we needed to ship updates to end users fast because we were iterating. Uh, that works really well actually for us. The Electron auto update mechanism is fuego um, and it really helped <laughs> us like keep moving quickly. Uh, that thing by default put the, we decided to try to figure out the repo problem and so we actually use the IPFS main repo and then one day folks jumped into our Discord and said people who run both query desktop and IPFS companion are getting errors because they can't open at the same time because they're fighting for the repo lock. And so we went, it took us seven months, eight months, and we moved, we migrated out of that. And so we took the, we took and moved into our own IPFS repository, moving all the data there. Uh, so the user's local machine for their experience would have been, you can now run both if you want um, and the data will not cross, but you now lose. We sort of felt like, which was being the right citizen of an IPFS ecosystem? Do you read from that canonical data store or do you create your own? Uh, we were, when we were told to create our own, it took us eight months. And this is what I mean by competing with a Web3 stack against Web2. We got smoked in the market. Like, again, we're building a product that is supposed to serve customers. Our customers, for those five years, are screaming at us, access control on data sets. And we, had, we were busy trying to figure out how to get data to move from A to B. We were busy trying to figure out how to do just stay connected to each other, please. We were trying to figure out, like, okay, the original thesis that I had for coming into the whole thing was, well, I think that the reason that data sets, there's no GitHub for data hasn't taken off is the scale of cost for the cloud service scales completely differently because users are being encouraged to add data. And so we can use IPFS to compensate for that, which I'm implicitly assuming that IPFS has solved the data availability problem, which it hasn't and never claimed to. But we at least thought that we'd get a better like transmission rate or we could start to offload some of the traffic onto the network. Um, we, not only did we never get there, we did not get into a position where we could iterate fast enough based on user feedback. And we were competing against companies that were building centralized products that were destroying us. Just honest truths. Um, and so as people in application space building on top of IPFS, this is the question. Why did we build on top of IPFS? What tangible benefit did we get from using IPFS that we couldn't have gained without it? In our view, we really like we fully drank, drink, drank, drunk, drink, still drink the content addressing Kool Aid. Like I think that content addressing is a fundamental, like primitive that I want to see proliferate, and it is one of the reasons why I'm around here. But again, stuff we had to build ourselves. Like our users wanted collaboration. Like there's this tool that we looked at all the time called Deep Note, and they just killed us. They had live Jupyter notebooks. And we were, they just watched, it was just like watching them every six weeks, launch these amazing features. And it was just like, oh man, that would be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like, you know, I, I, I was talking with uh, Dustmop who's here. We've worked together on this project. Uh, in case he's also here, we worked together on this uh, for years. We wanted uh, like concrete examples of stuff that we just really wanted that was like really basic. It was like just feedback from the data store. Um, so the user experience for 
us was a user would drop usually you know a minimum 200 megabyte sometimes 10 gigabyte file csv file over a query desktop which would be under the hood ipfs add we refactored our ad pipeline two or three times to turn it into a parallelizable like just transparent stream through to the ad process and so eventually we were finally to the point where we were just blocked on hashing but like we didn't we had to build our own progress bars we had to build our own hooks into that to show this is how far you are in the ingest process which did not come to us for free um and so yeah uh and uh and so this is it's this all sounds really ranty but like i think this is we're talking about applications on ipfs and so i want to transition to stuff that might sound spicy but like eh, we'll just we we'll just might as well get into it um this is i think a strong view that we've arrived at and so to be clear i've dropped down a level my our goal with number zero is to make the next query founder have a better time like that's why i'm here um and i think one of the things that for us is that I'm just going to put this view out here and say like, hey, what do we think about this? I don't, I don't know that I believe this yet, but like, I want to experiment with this viewpoint and see what y'all think about it. I think this idea that just UnixFS is the killer app of IPFS, like um, the fact that it's like a file system is a really solid abstraction for data layout. There's no block limit. You can put a file into UnixFS and from the user adding perspective, I can put a 10 gig file there. I can put a 32 terabyte file in there. It's cool, right? It's going to work. I have files and directories. It's a really straightforward way for me to understand how to lay out data. I don't, I've, I would very much, I'm very much hoping this week to talk to the ProBlab team about getting some measurements of just how much of the data on the public DHT is UnixFS data versus how much is IPLD data. Um, uh, this is an even stronger view from the application space. I have to be totally honest that IPLD is actually detrimental to application developer velocity. I think that, um, and the, the problem here is like, when viewed through the lens of like, I need more users or I'm going to die, uh, we, I feel they provided us very little benefit and actually like in hindsight was a total time sink that I as a CEO was a mistake to like invest time in that because it provided no benefit to my end users. Um, that, uh, yeah, which is to get to the data interrupt stuff, you need users and data so it's you being in this in this sentence is the application developer needs users and data and enough of those. Uh, I, I didn't want to let you off with a spicy take. Why <laughs> do you feel like it was an SDK issue? Do you feel like there was something wrong with the schema? Do yeah. You feel like there was it was unnecessary abstract. You you tell me. Yeah, it was the complexity of it. I think, um, and I'll I'll get into a little more of what I think might be a concrete solution. But like, generally, it's just like like what. Like, what am I getting as an application developer? Like, what, what am I actually concretely getting? Am I getting a, a like better sync? Am I getting faster thing? Like, I think what I'm getting is, do I have, let's, let's get even spicier. Um, am, am, am I, That's not spicy. But, but like, but like, no, but I think the, the second line, right? The, the belief that we can teach our applications to traverse application data without human intervention, like is, is I think that's an admirable thing, but like as an application developer, or actually I should, phrase this more specifically, as someone running a startup, right? Like as someone who's trying to figure out a sustainable business, like looking at it through that lens, or is it like, what does IPLD get us? Because we all want interoperable data. I think the question is like, what do you mean by IPLD? Because I feel like it's a <laughs> massive mess of- Yeah, I should be, yeah. It's like, like if you're saying like the, the, the IPLD data model, doesn't yeah. do anything, I completely get that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on the other hand, being able to talk about like, more fully data abstracted, like be able to like, like, mm -hmm. have transports. I don't care about your data. Right. Like, my CID is useful. Right. At least for me. Uh, yeah. The other part is like be able to say like, like I want to just pin this data set. I don't have to care structure about it. I want to pin it. Right. Which is also useful. So like, it, yeah. It doesn't yeah. I think the point being made here though is that as an application developer, you don't care about the, the your data being agnostic because you're using your data. Yeah. Right, you don't need to share your data to other apps, so it doesn't need to be IPLA. But, well, but right? specifically, you, you don't care about the data model. You don't care about the fact that, like, like uh, that your that there exists some abstract library somewhere that mm. you understand Seaboard or JSON or whatever in the same way. All you care is that you have your data and it's content addressed and it can link to other content addressed data. That's all you care about. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So this is fun, by the way. <laughs> 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 so, uh, to, to, to repeat that back a little bit on 
almost then. Um, was it that you were trying to define your own IPLDE applied yeah. data and that you should have used UNXFS and just done stuff into files? And the, like, had that be like, good enough? Yeah, just as a point of comparison, like we wrote, when we switched to this, like we wrote the, so query is a data set version control tool. Like in theory, we should be like the golden poster child for linked data, right? Like the, it's, it's data catalog. Like it, you should like we, and we really had aspirations of like, wouldn't it be amazing to be able to have cells that reference other cells inside of CSV files? Like what if we introduce the CID data type, it's like column type inside of a CSV file that lets you, you know, connect very, 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 granularly to other data sets. And like that was, for us, was like one of the big draws of IPLD. It was like, oh shit, I think we're gonna need something that looks like IPLD for that. Um, if you look at time to develop, like when we just wrote the first version that just crammed stuff in using UnixFS and like queries data model to this day is a UnixFS directory at the top and then just a convention of file names. And so there's a thing that says dataset.json that looks a lot like package.json in the NPM universe. And that contains a JSON map of keys that all, whose values are all CIDs. And that's how query works. It opens up dataset.json and deserializes that. It really sounds like issues where one have to deal with this whole data model complexity crap and also have to deal with the fact that one just sucks. But like, because if, if you had to use a file system to work with structured data, when I knew you would just drop your structured data into something that didn't care that it's a file or whatever, it would work. But I mean, I think what, I, I actually wonder if, but like for us, the file system metaphor allowed us to just go, fuck, it's a file system. Like, just like throw it in. And like. Okay. So you can almost be like large files or whatever. You don't want to think about the fact that like your data needs to be charged or whatever. Yeah. I still think that like the right way of doing that would have been on, so like only our I believe it is designed for data. Uh, so like it, it automatically chunks the data in some way. But so, yeah. so, so I think this actually excellently made, made the point. So the fishing team met query were like, this is amazing. This is great. And we're like, and through query, we actually finally found connections into the IPFS ecosystem because we thought, still think, we don't know what we're doing. Surely we must be holding this wrong. It can't just be the system. It, it must be us. And then, and then Brendan was like, Sai, <laughs> allow me to introduce you to K and Y. We're like, oh, oh. Um, right? And it, so this very, like, in some ways, Prairie was kind of, kind of like, going like this was ahead of us in becoming protocol engineers. <laughs> and because we had that lesson, we're like, okay, we're literally gonna turn into a protocol engineering company. We essentially pulled up because we saw that IPFS was not ready to build apps on. And we switched to becoming protocol engineers. So, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Also, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I did. Do we want to? Do you have a thought? Or? It's just uh, like it seemed like some of the conversation there was related. Like you said, or uh, this is I feel it is detrimental to application developer, which may be true, but it's, I definitely think it's true that's like it's detrimental to product man, like product developers or entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's it, this is a poorly this is this reads like a slide that was written ten minutes ago. But a lot of times, uh, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it really that a lot of times mm -hmm. you're a developer who's trying to become a yeah product developer, like you're like, oh, but this is going to be useful for like e two or v three, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, you you never get that far because your startup dies because you were like yeah, you and like it's good at not just coming up with what's good for you as the app developer. But yeah, like your customers. A way to rephrase that is like. There's long-term benefit in using a guilty query, but we needed short-term gains, and there was drag instead. Yeah. Uh, like we had a, a lot of plans where IPLD could get us to, but we were no close to that because we still needed to get to the, the basics. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Which is too hard to do that. So is there a path where you don't get the drag? So can I? Yeah, I have a constructive. I have constructive thoughts instead of just being a <laughs> jerk. <laughs> um, so I think the first thing to me is like I I don't. I don't, I don't, this, like, I sometimes sort of slag on IPLD. I, in my head, I'm like, finally, I feel like I'm arriving at a place that it's a different use case. Like IPLD is like, um, much more when you, there are, you just, there are absolutely requirements where you need to traverse across linked data and you need really, really finely shaped data models. Like I do not. I, I, <laughs> but if you disagree, I'm okay being taken like. I, I, I think it's like, I, I feel it was made with this idea that we should be able to do that without ever really thinking 
use case. Mm. I pushed on that a lot in the past, where like I really wanted to just be able to fully abstract from this data model. I think it, it, yes, there may be valuable use cases for that. It shouldn't necessarily be end all be all though, because like we still don't have that use case. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I and I think it should be. That's what I and I personally would like to advocate for. In my head, there's like this non-existent but secondary product like IPDB that is like an IPLD centric thing that is really focused on more database looking stuff and less file system looking stuff. Um, but keeping our emphasis on the file system looking stuff for a second, these are the things that I think I would say are like commonly occurring stuff that people want out of the ecosystem. We all need access control. We all need, I'm gonna to talk to you about arbitrary metadata in a second. Versioning, not everybody needs, but like, eh, it's pretty dope. It's good to have. Um, and we need some type of mutability, like a naming system that, that is robust and works. Um, my evidence for this, Chris and I did not coordinate on this before. Uh, I took a photo of his slide and put it in mine. <laughs> because, and I specifically want to point to that inline headers. To me, that's arbitrary metadata. And like, that's a great like example of like, and then I also, you know, what if we build those things as extensions on a Unix FS like thing? Ignore the serialization format for a second. Just like think about the progression of the like file system apps as an abstraction layer to make it easier for application developers. And then that for me, because I have admittedly worked a lot with the, the fission folks, we start to get into these kind of questions of like, can we uh, in my head, like I think I think that I'm starting to realize that there's some really nice properties about UnixFS specifically. The, there's a link section and there's a data section in the protobuf. I think that's actually good for a lot of reasons. The more we talk about it at number zero, the more that seems like a good thing. Um, I, I, I'm not totally sold on this. I think that like WinFS is do, like has correctly identified these four things that a lot of people need. And like when you say access control, you need encryption, right? So that's like you in our space. So that's that's just like a substrate requirement of, or sub, sub requirement of that. Um, WinFS has arbitrary metadata built into it. WinFS has merging built into it. I really strongly think that all of these things need to be optional um, and that uh, some of the challenges that we've been thinking about a bunch are like when we started trying to use, so we wrote a semi-functioning implementation of WinFS and like intended to switch to that for query. Things that we ran into were immediately like, oh shit, when we started to like write the mock code that like put query on top of the new WinFS stuff, was like, oh shit, we gotta plug like application specific merge semantics into how do we actually merge two files? Because as soon as you introduce versioning, you get branching. And as soon as you get branching, you wanna put those things back together. And if you wanna put those things back together and you just try to let a computer magically do it for you, it's not gonna end well for the perception of the end user. Um, and so there is like, this is really hard. And then I do think those, I think it should be really opt-inable. Like not everybody wants versioning. Not everybody wants encryption and privacy. Like I think that having this be a set of progressive upgrades would be really good. But like, I'm just wondering what the right substrate is. Like it, it's, it, we can have a lot of like bike shedding around, like how the bytes get laid out on disk. But like the, to me, some of the like primitives of maturing the Unix FS branch of the, of the development tree might be a mechanism. It, what it does is it holds onto the metaphor of files and folders. And I think that's actually might be a great interface for laying out your data. And like, that's my, I don't know. I'll go to the thank you slide now. <laughs> 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 Which is. Just... <laughs>